Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 5 of the CIA video series for this book. In this particular video, we are going to be exploring kernel exploitation on Windows. Now the book uh, covers two techniques for, uh, you know, to actually perform kernel exploitation or to elevate your privileges by exploiting the kernel, uh, both manually and automatically. And of course, we are going to be focusing on the manual uh, the manual technique as uh, you know it is quite important and you may need some clarity on that um, with that being said let's get started now the the target virtual machine that we're going to be using for this particular chapter is windows 7 and of course you can try it out with all the other versions of windows uh, the technique still remain the same so uh, i already have a meterpreter session on the target and uh, you know if i type in sysinfo here uh, you can see it's uh, Windows 7 6.1 build 7601. And, uh, you know, if I if I type in get use ID, you can see I'm currently logged in or I'm currently using, um, you know, the I'm currently using the user user here. So and that's an unprivileged user. Now, as I said, we're, we are not going to be utilizing or leveraging the interpreter to actually perform most of the uh, to actually perform kernel exploitation manually. So I'm just going to get into a shell session right now we've already taken a look at how to perform local enumeration on windows targets and uh, in this particular video uh, we're going to be exploring the process of enumerating um, kernel exploits for this particular version of windows now in order to do that we're going to be utilizing the windows exploit suggester now the windows exploit suggester can be you know easily found by googling uh, you know, the, the same term, just Google Windows Exploit Suggester, and it should bring up the GitHub repository. So I've just opened up Firefox here, and I'll just search for it. So Windows Exploit uh, Suggester, like so. And um, there we are. So we have the first one right over there. So we'll click on that. And I've already explained the usability of this tool in the book. So again, I'll not be delving deep into this, but you can actually clone the repository from this link here. Um, that being said, let's actually move on to enumerating, you know, in you know, kernel vulnerabilities on this particular version of Windows. Now, the Windows Exploit Suggester is an offline tool. When when I say offline tool, uh, or rather, it's it's not a local tool that is run on the target system. Instead, what we need to do is type in the system info command on the target system. Now, the system info command on Windows will display, as it says, uh, a list of information regarding the system. So there's vital information here. One of them is going to be the operating system name, uh, the operating system version. And then right over here at the bottom, you're going to see your hotfixes, right? Now, your hotfixes are uh, in, in the context of Windows are essentially patches or updates. Now, in the context of identifying vulnerabilities for this particular version of Windows, hotfixes can tell you one of two things. Number one, they can tell you what updates have been applied on the target. And number two, it will tell you whether those particular updates are vulnerable to any particular exploit. And that's exactly what the Windows Exploit Suggester tool does. So in order to use the tool, we need to copy this information and you can just simply copy it from the terminal right uh, till, you know, right from the point where the information actually begins. And I'm just going to open up a new uh, window here or a new pane here. And uh, we are going to save this. We're going to uh, we're going to save that content into a file. So I'll just head over to my desktop and I'm going to save this. I'm just going to open up Vim and we'll save it into a file called Windows7.txt. And uh, I'll you know paste that information in there. There we are. Looks good. And I'll write and quit. So we have that saved and I'm now going to navigate into my Windows exploits um, or my Windows enumeration tools. So window, Windows enum and I have the Windows exploit uh, suggested tool right over here. All right. So in order to use the Windows exploit suggested tool, what we need to do is we need to run it firstly, and it is a Python script. We then need to provide the database, the vulnerability database. So the way it works is it checks the uh, information that you have provided in a text file against a data a vulnerability database and identifies vulnerabilities for that specific version of Windows. So the first thing we need to provide is the database, and of course I've covered how to uh, how to actually get your database downloaded, and uh, it is always recommended that you keep it updated. In my case, the database is. Uh, right over there so i've actually provided it and then we need to provide the system the the system info uh file which is stored on my desktop 
uh, and it is called windows7.txt and of course you can save it wherever you want i just saved it there because it's easy to remember so once that's done i'm just going to hit enter and it's going to start performing the uh, it's start it's going to start performing the vulnerability identification and uh, in this particular case we're interested in kernel exploits so i'm just going to drag my screen over here for a second so that we can actually see the various exploits now typically with this tool the the exploits shown at the top here are going to uh, you know provide you with the best uh, you know chances or probability of success now uh, it is color coded in that identified vulnerabilities are going to be color coded in green right over here and it's going to provide you with the microsoft vulnerability id now we can see if we start off from the beginning of the results we are able to identify a microsoft uh, a, an exploit for the windows kernel and uh, this particular exploit actually provides us with privilege escalation so we can find out more information about this vulnerability by taking a look at some of the reference links that are provided to us here so for example we have the exploit db link so i can open that link up uh, and I can just copy it actually we don't need to do that right now so I'll just copy it and I'll paste it in Firefox there we go and uh, that will bring it up um, so it's opened up Chromium here so I'll just close the window there there we are back into Firefox so this is the exploit so uh, the exploit code on um, on exploit DB and of course um, it provides you with uh, the credits for the exploit and the proof of concept for it now uh, I want to, of course, you know, get some more information regarding this particular exploit. So I can perform a, a quick Google search on this, and I can say, I'll paste in the Microsoft vulnerability ID there, and I just say exploit, right? And let's see what this brings up. All right, so right from the beginning, we get a link here to a GitHub repository, and uh, we can click on the uh, the actual repository there. And this provides us with the pre-built binaries or executable files for the exploit. Now, I have covered the process of compiling the uh, of compiling exploits on Windows. You can see we have the exploit code listed out right over here, and you can actually analyze it. And it is recommended to analyze exploit code before you run it. And then we have the pre-built binary right over here, which I believe I already have saved in my downloads directory. So if I open that up, you can see I have it saved here. And I've renamed it to exploit.exe. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to actually transfer this exploit onto the target. So the way we're going to do this is uh, we are going to just, um, you know, I'm just going to drag this screen right over here. Uh, and then I'm going to start a local web server to host the files on from my Kali virtual machine. And the way I'll do this is I'll do this uh, by utilizing the uh, a Python module called Simple HTTP Server. It is a Python 2 module. Uh, it is also available for Python 3 under the uh, under the name HTTP.serve, and I'll show you how to use it. So the exploit is stored in my downloads folder. So that's where I'm going to serve this particular file from. Um, so if I list out the files, you can see we have exploit.exe there. So I'm going to say sudo python, uh, and then I'll specify the module option. So I say simple http server and we'll host uh, we'll run the web server on port 80 and we'll hit enter it's going to ask me for my password and uh, it's now going to serve exploit.exe on the web server right so now in order to transfer it onto the windows system we are going to operate from the uh, users downloads folder because again we we first of all know that we windows defender is disabled and secondly we have permissions to actually save the file onto the target here now it's never recommended uh, in a real in a real world scenario or during a penetration test or red team operation to save exploit code uh, in a directory that is frequently accessed by a user so you typically want to do this in a folder that's not usually accessed by the user and that could be the temp folder which I again I have explored in the book uh, in much more detail so when we're inside the downloads folder we're going to use the cert util utility and I'll say url cache we'll utilize the url cache uh, parameter and we want to download the file from the web server and I'm just going to put in my Kali uh, my Kali VM IP address and we want to download the exploit.exe file and we're going to save it into the same file name so exploit.exe we hit enter and uh, you should see that we, we we should be able to download the exploit code right over here and on our web server we can see we get a successful 
um, we actually see that we um, the target downloaded it so the target ip is listed here and it was successfully able to get the exploit.exe uh, file successfully right so if we list out the contents of the downloads folder you can now see we have the exploit.exe uh, executable here so if we try and ex execute it, let, let's see what this does, right? And of course, I've explained more details pertaining to this particular vulnerability or this particular exploit in the book. Uh, so I'm, you know, essentially taking you through the practical aspect here. So if I execute it, and I'll just close this now because we don't need it, you can see uh, that this particular vulnerability um, works for these versions of Windows. So we have Windows 7, Windows 8.1, Windows 10, and Windows Server 2012 R2. Now, if we want to use it, we simply need to run the uh, the exploit executable and provide the operating system version in terms of the number. So to do this, we're simply going to say, and of course our target is running uh, Windows 7. So we are going to say, sorry, um, exploit.exe, and then we simply type in seven and we hit enter. And now the exploit is going to take a few seconds to run, but once it's run, it should actually elevate our privileges to that of anti-authority system, which means we have the top, uh, the topmost control or the topmost privileges uh, that you can obtain on a Windows system. So again, we're going to give that a few seconds to actually complete. All right, so the exploit ran successfully, and it provides us with a new command session here or a command prompt session. So we can confirm that our privileges have been elevated by typing in who am I, right? And you can see right over here, NT authority system. And if we type in get privs, uh, this should display or actually just type in privs that that should actually display the privileges that we have on the target system. So we have been able to successfully ele elevate our privileges by, uh, you know, exploiting the Windows kernel. And of course, I've taken you through the process of doing this manually. And I have covered all the other techniques, uh, especially the automated uh, technique of using Metasploit, as well as how to compile exploit code, which is actually recommended instead of using pre-built binaries, as they can also run malicious code on the target. And that's not something that we want. We simply want to elevate our privileges. That being said, I'll be seeing you in the next CIA video for this book.